Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This video is about the coolest looking infantry unit, in my opinion, the two-handed swordsman, and the Malay unique unit, the Karambit Warrior. Considering Malay have a unique tech that removes the gold cost of their swordsman line, essentially what I want to know is, as a Malay player, in what situation would the Karambit Warrior be worth making instead? Or is the two-handed swordsman always the better choice? Is Karambit coin worth the digital gold? Let's check it out. Let's start out by taking a quick look at their stats. The first thing you'll notice is the Swordsman line has considerably more HP and attack. On the other hand, the Elite Karambit Warrior has one more melee armor and a far lower cost. In fact, it's about half the cost, making it the epitome of quantity over quality, made even more so by the fact that they also take up just half a population space. That means with a standard max population of 200, you could theoretically have anywhere up to 400 of them at the same time. Of course, the numbers shown here are assuming that you're paying the gold cost for the Swordsman line, and the Malay's unique tech, Forced Levy, removes that gold cost entirely. At that point, their two-handed swordsman becomes arguably one of the strongest trash units available to any civilization, except for maybe the elite Magyar Hazar. Following their theme of overwhelming numbers, Karambit Warriors have a 6 second creation time, compared to the 21 seconds for the generic Swordsman line. After conscription, that number drops to 4.5 seconds. That means Karambit Warrior armies are built very quickly, with 13 units being made every minute per castle, as opposed to the roughly 4 two-handed swordsmen per barracks. Their movement speed is also much faster than typical infantry, and they actually outrun most infantry units, including non-elite eagle warriors. Altogether, their quick creation time, fast movement, and potential for double the army size given a usual number of villagers means they're perfectly designed for swarming enemy units or towns with overwhelming numbers. But this is really about comparing them to the two-handed swordsman, so let's see how those two units do head-to-head. -head. One on one, the elite Karambit warrior goes down after four hits, whereas the two-handed swordsman can take eight, which means it ends up winning with about half of its HP left. Remember though, the Elite Karambit Warrior is significantly cheaper, and also has cheaper upgrades. In fact, since they cost roughly half the amount, take half a population space, and are created much faster, a 2 to 1 ratio seems more realistic in practice. You might intuitively assume that balances out the teams, since the Swordsman was left with half health. But actually, the Karambits win a 2 vs 1 easily. A numbers advantage is very easy to underestimate. It's a pretty similar advantage on a large scale as well, with 40 Karambit Warriors against 20 two-handed swordsmen, ending with about 40% of the Karambit Warriors collective HP remaining. To be fair, the Karambit Warriors do have a slight resource advantage here, because they aren't truly half the cost of the two-handed swordsmen. If we properly even out the resources, the margin closes a bit, but it's still clearly in the Karambit's favor. That makes sense considering the Karambit Warriors collectively have more HP and attack as well as one more armor. Of course, Karambit Warriors are costing gold, but it's a decisive enough advantage you might speculate that even in games with no trade, there might be good enough value there to make them a viable choice. Since Malay have guilds, the lowest price of food at the market is 17 gold for 100 food. Using that makes the Karambit Warriors 10 gold cost become the equivalent of 58 food, but adding in their 20 food on top of that makes one unit already more expensive than a two-handed swordsman meaning you'd be able to produce fewer of them in the long run. Basically, if you don't have a long-term source of gold, Karambits just won't win long-term against the Swordsman line, and aren't a viable unit in late-game trash fights without trade. The other thing I want to stress here is so far I'm assuming you already double your opponent's army size at the onset of the fight. To illustrate what an important assumption that is, we'll do the same 38 elite Karambit warriors against 21 two-handed swordsmen, but I'll start them off with even numbers and add in the extra units partway through the fight. It's the same total amount spent on each side as the original test, but now instead of Karambit warriors winning with 18 units left over, it's the two-handed swordsmen that win with 40% of their HP left. To me, that illustrates their cheap cost doesn't mean they work in long, drawn-out conflicts with units trickling in from both sides. 
They really need to have their critical mass before you engage, so you end up swarming the enemy units with overwhelming numbers, or I think you'll find they're a very underwhelming unit. Of course, so far I'm comparing the two units by just mashing them against each other, but now let's see how well that holds up against a variety of units. First of all, I think it's already becoming clear that the Karambit Warrior is better suited for raiding. A big part of that is they're fast enough to chase down fleeing villagers, and can also escape if your opponent's army shows up to defend their town. Helping that out as well is a small plus one attack bonus against buildings, though it's not enough to make them as effective as other infantry at taking out buildings quickly, even assuming proportionally larger numbers. Like other infantry, they're also going to be pretty ineffective against defensive buildings like castles. Now before we go further, I want to quickly address the issue of valuing gold here, since Karambit Warriors cost gold, and of course two-handed swordsmen from Malay do not in the late game. For all the tests and number crunching coming up, I'm going to be assuming that gold has the same value as food, which you may disagree with based on experience. If you're playing Malay in a 1 vs 1, where food is actually much easier for you to get than gold, then of course the two-handed swordsman is the only real option for long-term cost efficiency and would be the better choice. On the other hand, assuming you have access to gold through trade or another means, the total resources suggest that 24 Karambit Warriors are roughly equivalent to 14 two-handed swordsmen, so that's what I'm going to use. Now one of the most common units they'll run into during the late game is probably the trash units. You can see they perform similarly against those. They're both very good against pikemen and skirmishers, and still fairly good against hussars. Remember, head to head the Karambit Warrior was winning easily, so it's interesting to me that against the trash units they seem to be performing about the same. They're also both a solid counter to Shotel Warriors, with roughly 40% of their HP left when equal resources are spent on each side, and are perfectly matched in how terrible they are against Jaguar Warriors because of its anti-infantry attack. They're also both poor choices against the Teutonic Knight on account of its high melee armor. The Krambit Warriors in particular can't do much beyond tickle them. Of course, you'll also want to avoid the Cataphract because of its trample damage and anti-infantry bonus. They're both also trampled, literally and figuratively, by battle elephants, which just have much better stats as well as trample damage. Interestingly, they're also roughly on the same level against paladins, though that would be an ineffective exchange over the long run. Frankly, it's a bit surprising to me how well the Krambit warriors here keep up with the two-handed swordsmen, though again keep in mind this is all assuming gold is plentiful. Now there are two units where I found the two-handed swordsman has a significant edge. The first is against Eagle Warriors, which makes sense considering they have a much higher attack bonus of plus 8, as opposed to the Karambit Warriors plus 2. The Karambit Warrior also suffers against Samurai with their plus 10 bonus against unique units. The two-handed swordsman isn't exactly great against them, but they can at least hold their own. Now on the other hand, the Karambit Warrior has a much longer list of units that it does significantly better against. The first is the Champion. The two-handed swordsman low resource cost almost exactly balances out the champion's better stats, while the elite Krambit warrior is actually a completely serviceable counter to the generic champion, again assuming you can properly build up double the numbers. Krambit warriors also have an edge against ranged units across the board. Assuming they can manage to get heavy cavalry archers cornered, they do notably better, and their speed also makes them much more likely to be able to force that kind of engagement. Against archers, the difference is even more dramatic. Conventional wisdom says that archers are a good counter to infantry, but with equal resources on the field at once, archers alone can't win, even with a bit of micro. I hesitate to say the Karambit Warrior counters archers as a general rule, but it's fair to say they're much more effective than more standard infantry. It's a pretty similar result for the Hand Cannoneer as well. You can take Karambit Warriors out in two shots as opposed to three for the Swordsman. But again, the extra numbers make the difference. Next, I really wanted to see how they did against Scorpions and Onagers, but I found that hard to test in an authentic way. It really just depends on how many siege units your opponent can muster. But in general, I'd say Scorpions especially are going to be one of the best counters to either units as things scale up. So after some promising tests, I'm starting to think that Karam Bitcoin was maybe a little undervalued, at least by me. Obviously, there are many other units that I could have tested them against, especially the unique units, but I still think there are some general trends that you can pull out that should apply to those as well. First of all, in general, I would say both are strong choices against trash units. 
Another big takeaway is that assuming gold is easy to obtain through trade, Karambit warriors actually ended up being equally or more effective against infantry, excluding samurai and eagle warriors. Against ranged units as well, the tests imply that they're by far the better choice. The big things to remember are just to make sure you're always outnumbering your opponent by ideally at least a 2 to 1 ratio, and then use your speed to escape before your opponent can properly generate a response. You also want to avoid trickling your units into a fight. They need to hit hard all at once to be used to their maximum potential. But that's all for this one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.